goodness sake. Where is he? He was meant to be here half hour ago. Katie, hi. Am I early? <laughs> Living on a boat on the river sounds idyllic, doesn't it? But what about if you lived on a boat that was 100% solar powered and you had no bills? So I've come here to talk to Ryan about his beautiful wide beam solar powered boat. This is the Everything Electric Show. If you like everything electric, then you'll love our live events. Next up, we're in Amsterdam for Fully Charged Live Europe on the 24th, 25th and 26th of November. Ryan, I'm really impressed. This is such a beautiful boat. Can you tell me how this all came about? Well, it's a long story, but uh, my partner and I, Hayley, both had separate boats. Um, living separately and then we ended up spending more time on each other's boats and we decided to sell up and have this commissioned and built. Um, yeah, so we had her built from scratch um, and she just exceeded our expectations by far. She was designed to be electric and solar um, and as eco as we could, so extra insulation, triple glazing, all the things we could do to make her as sustainable as possible. Right. Yeah. Wow, that is amazing and I can see you've got a substantial amount of solar on the roof there which is beautifully sort of set into the boat, it's great. Yeah, no, we had the roof specially made flatter than a standard boat just so we could make them look integrated um, and she's slightly wider than a normal boat so we could get six kilowatts um, on the boat. Right. Yeah, and, yeah. And then you've got battery storage as well. Yes, and we've got massive batteries. So they're old forklift lead acid batteries, but wow. there's 2.4 tonnes of them. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so a 96 kilowatt hour battery. So oh, it's, um, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that really, now I really understand. That's, a, that's like weeks of, yeah, yeah, of exactly, energy yeah, use yeah. you've got there. The idea of that is we obviously often the weather's just like this and then we're yeah. not producing very much but when we have those sunny days we can build up and we can store all that energy right. ra rather than having a small battery deplete it and then wait and for then a sunny day yeah, yeah we have so half the battery banks in here robert so right. we oh, go wow. there and they are big units aren't they so yeah. they're very that is the top but there yeah. isn't like layers there. that's one battery yeah that goes all the way down yeah there. they're made up of two volt cells which are 800 right. millimeters high wow um, yeah 50 kilos each and they're 48 of them all together Wow. They all linked up in series to create the 48 volts that we need. Right. And that's the same on the other side. Yeah, it's the same, exactly the same on the other side. That's wow. half of it. Yeah. And also, when you because when you say about the weight, I was imagining this huge, but actually it's quite it's they're heavy. Yeah, so yeah, they're yeah, actually yeah, yeah. very compact. Yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 No, it fits in there beautifully. Yeah. I mean, that bank would normally sit where, the, where a diesel motor would go. So right. it kind of replaces the weight almost. Yeah. It's, it's heavier than a diesel yeah. motor, but it's still, yeah, almost a replacement for, for weight wise. Right. According to the Canal and River Trust, more than 15,000 people live permanently on the UK's canals and waterways. Renewable energy can provide us with a sustainable solution to transform our rivers and canals, reducing or completely eliminating the need for fossil fuels. And interestingly, from 2025, Amsterdam's ancient canals will be fully electric with a ban on diesel engines coming into place. Well, this is such a lovely space, right? I mean, it's, so, it's very easy to forget you're actually on, <laughs> on a boat. It looks like a really nice house. But... No, no, thanks. It was, yeah. Kind of, we try to have a minimalist design. Cause yeah. boats are, because they're generally small spaces, the more stuff you put in, the more cluttered. Cluttered. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we try to... No, it feels very airy. But then, so the yeah. windows, well, they're, they're triple glazed, are they? Yeah, so right. we try to be as eco as we can. So they're right. all triple glazed, um, which we actually had made ourselves. And then the insulation is also triple. So right. generally boat builders just spray 25 mil insulation. We went 75 mil right. just to try and contain all our heat that we, that we yeah. produce. Yeah. And that's up in the ceiling as well? Ceiling all the way right. around. And then the, underneath the underfloor heating, there's 100 mil of, of hard insulation as well. Right. So it's kind wow. of this wrapped, yeah. wrapped cocoon. Because I mean, I think, I suppose that's the natural thing with a boat. Uh, you know, in my very limited experience is you're, you're basically living in a house that's surrounded by quite cold water. Yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> but you've got, re you're really protecting yourself. Yeah, yeah, against exactly. That. We've kind of sealed it. Right. But because we are so sealed, we have to vent ventilate the boat. Right. So, so normally boats would have these mushroom vents. Yeah. And basically all, all whatever heat you create with oh, that's the fire going straight out goes there. straight out your vents, yeah. So we have a heat recovery ventilation system um, Germans have been built, using these in house building for, for a long 30 time. years. Yeah. yeah. What it does is it takes the warm, stale air from a high points in the boat. It puts it, it puts it through a heat heat absorption um, capillary action, if you like, and it 
warms the fresh air coming in. So you right. recover 70% of the heat, wow. of the heat yeah. while still changing all the air in the boats all right. the time. Yeah, so the actual air that's coming in is, is warmed. Yeah, yeah, it's, right. yeah, it's pre-warmed and it's clean and fresh. So right. you're not re-breathing the stale And does that, that doesn't use a lot of energy, presumably. It's a 10 watt it? fan. It's a, right, yeah, yeah, tiny. yeah. It's right. a no-brainer. With your batteries. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> All boats should have them. It's bizarre that they don't. It's, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It seems a simple thing. But I mean, that's, I suppose that's the beauty of, of, of working from scratch. So you've really presumably learned a huge amount then building this. Yeah, we about had lots what of research. And, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. build only took a year, but the research, I was researching it for probably five, six years right. before that. Yeah, yeah. planning. Yeah. 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 And then I'm fascinated by the concrete then. So that was that like delivered onto the boat liquid you know or, or was it blocks yeah no we we poured that in so right. you, so normally a boat would have to have about seven tons of concrete blocks in it for ballast just right. to keep the boats in the water yeah so we knew we had to have that anyway but then we also wanted to we wanted to store heat so that we could keep it so we insulated underneath it right and then we we threw this 18 tons of concrete slab which we have plumbing pipes through. right so when the fire's on it so that is only on. heated by the fire. There's no other only way of heating it. Only heated by the it, fire. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then that stores that heat. The it's, heat yeah, you're getting yeah. out of that. Yeah, exactly. So we story. burn the fire hot for about two or three hours in winter when it's super cold. Right. The next morning the boat's still warm. She's still at 18 degrees. The wow. slab will be yeah wow. about 18, 19 degrees. Absolutely love it. And the kitchen is beautiful and very. I'd love to cook in it. It looks really efficient. That you. But you. But you've got so everything's electric. There's no gas hobs or anything like that. Yeah, it's all electric. I mean, we we've gone with very efficient appliances just to try and conserve the energy that we producing yeah um, so it's an induction hob um yeah like energy rating a plus for the oven and we actually started using um we started using an air fryer i know there's a lot of right. stuff which is insanely efficient right um, yeah it's just because I've, I've only used one once it worked really yeah, well yeah. It was at someone it, else's house it but. uses about a third of the energy to roast a chicken so wow. an hour and a half roast chicken in the oven there the same thing will be happening about 45 minutes in there but only using one kilowatt where that's using three kilowatts yeah. so wow. yeah it's just amazing amazing right. yeah This is amazing wow that is well because this is what's really fascinating absolutely standard bath yeah. absolutely standard sink could yeah. be in a, this we could be in a house yeah, yeah. that looks slightly less standard <laughs> looks slightly different so that's our composting toilet we which we absolutely love right so it's waterless it doesn't use any water to flush so it saves saves on yeah the tanks or I mean, we collect all our water from from the roof but yeah saves a huge amount of water Basically, what happens is you sit. You sit, if you have a pee, you sit on it. All the liquids go down the front, right. and they just get flushed away. If you do a number two, so that's and, you, and that there. opens when you put, apply pressure. Yeah, when, when you sit. So I've you, never seen this. Before. So you very rarely see what's happened. No, because you're sitting down when it happens. And there's sawdust. All I can see is yeah. So we, when we start the bucket, we put a bit of sawdust in it. Just right. stops it sticking to the bucket. Right. It takes two of us about a month to fill a bucket. <laughs> Oh, God, every time I come into a new bit, it's a, this is amazing. What a beautiful bedroom. Yeah, no. Uh, it must be stunning to wake up here and you've got the view out the door there. That's yeah. stunning. Wow. Now, you probably notice our really hard bed. It which is, is very high. Unusual on a boat. There's two reasons for it. Right. One, normally boats' beds are low. Um, but we need to store water because we collect all our rainwater from the roof. So right. we wanted as much water storage as we could. So there's a massive water tank under there. Under the bed. <laughs> yeah. And then secondly, you get a nice view. If, yeah. up, if up high, you can look out the windows. So, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Wow, but is that what is that potable water? I mean, is that water you use in the kitchen or what? Yeah, what's it, goes, that it goes through a filtration system, so we have a treatment plant that treats it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, but so it, you actually don't have to go somewhere and fill up from a tap. Yeah, you we've know, got two can... weeks of storage, so yeah. I mean, wow. the summers now we um, we're getting longer than two weeks of our yes. water, so we do have to. You do have to yeah, use yeah, that, yeah. right? But yeah, for two of us, there's two weeks of water on board, which is which is nice. Yeah, <laughs> until it rains. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, but not, it's raining all day, so we've got. Yeah, nice you're okay today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, you're topping up well yeah, today. Yeah, but that is such a beautiful space it really is delightful wow no, it's amazing you. please support our stop burning stuff patreon and help us to tackle misinformation about electric vehicles and clean energy so ryan quite often people talk to me about going off grid and yeah, they're yeah. talking about their houses and i always say to them don't go off grid the grid's really useful you yeah, know you yeah. need that for back and forth yeah, energy yeah. trade all the stuff that could be happening in the future but it really makes sense on a boat you don't want to be on the grid on the boat because it's a pain. You've got to have a wire and you plug it in and it's difficult. You've done this remarkable thing. It's amazing what you've achieved. It's, I'm really impressed. 
Yeah, no, thank you. It is, um, yeah, we've, yeah, it was our aim to be as, as efficient as we could and not rely on anything. What would your advice be? Because there's going to be people watching this who would just love to do what you've done. I mean, what, what's your advice if, if someone is thinking, I want, I want, to, I want to do that? <laughs> the first thing, Robert, is just to ignore all the people who say it can't be done because right. it can be done. <laughs> That's <laughs> crazy. crazy. <laughs> and then do as much research as you can. Research and planning is going to save you a lot of costs. Right. We did a lot of experimenting, a lot of research, but a lot of experimenting. So we've kind of slowly evolved and tweaking the things that we do to kind of improve. Right. Um, yes, yeah, so there's, there's a wealth of information out there on YouTube. Um, yeah, you obviously have to watch a lot of YouTube stuff and right. build up of the right stuff. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there's a wealth of information out there and right. it can be done. Well, Ryan, thanks so much for showing us around. I mean, it's been a, re a genuine joy to find out all the things you've done here. It's been a real pleasure. Thanks, thanks so much. Robert. Thank you so much for having us on. It's been great. Really cool. Well, I think we've proven today that uh, this beautiful wide bean boat, the Sunflower, has proved beyond doubt that you can power a, a, a boat like this from solar, from batteries, the motors that was pu pushing us along now. It's so peaceful and quiet. It's such an improvement. Let's hope that all the boats on all the rivers around the world are like this in a few years' time. What a, what a difference it would make. And it proves that it can be done. And there's loads of naysayers, but they're wrong. This is a brilliant example of what can be done. One day you'll work on country file, Chris, then people walk in. <laughs> Not not on fully charged. We're just here. <laughs> what are you doing, Robert? I don't know. <laughs> okay, I'll be. I'll pretend Robert's my husband. What? Wow, living on a boat is like an idyllic. Sorry, sorry, Ryan. <laughs> That's going to be the problem.